I'm Tom Malagany with Inside EVs, and I'm standing here next to a Rivian R1T, all-electric pickup truck, or as Rivian likes to call it, an all-electric adventure vehicle. And I'm about to go on a great adventure. This is the media first drive event for Rivian. We're one of the first people to actually get behind the wheel and drive this vehicle, and we're going on a 28-mile-long adventure through the Colorado mountains where we are right now. We're just about to start. We're gonna be tackling switchbacks, crossing streams, climbing rocks, all kind of really intense off-road driving. Rivian promises us that it will not disappoint. You're gonna see soon if it does because I'm gonna be recording tons of video as I'm driving and you'll get to see the kind of adventure that we're on. And then I'm gonna do a little walk around of the vehicle, talk about some of its features, exterior and interior features. And then we're gonna do a wrap up to see if the R1T has what it takes to be called the ultimate electric adventure vehicle. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on Inside EVs. We started off bright and early in the morning and headed for the mountains. We had eight Rivian R1Ts in the caravan with a variety of different colors. About a mile in, the path turned from just dirt to a little bit of rocks, then got a little bit more rocky, but it didn't take long for the path to become all rocks. And then it got even more interesting where the path was rocks with water running down it and the hill became steeper as we drove up. Now there were a lot of large sharp rocks and this is where the R1T's side view cameras come in handy because they help you from slashing your sidewall on a really sharp rock or tree root. I apologize for the camera being so shaky, but we were really bouncing back and forth, even more so than you can tell from the video. I'm going to speed the video up here a little bit so you don't miss any of the footage, but it also doesn't take too long to show. Now we're getting to a point here where we needed a spotter because the hill became very steep and there were very large sharp rocks on both sides of the road. So Rivian brought someone who is really experienced driving on this trail to help us in some of the points that could get us in trouble. Now don't forget, while most of us have some experience off-roading, this is some pretty serious terrain to cover. So I think it was smart by Rivian to bring somebody in that could help us in some of the most challenging areas. But I have to say, the R1T made it easy. Even for inexperienced drivers like us, we made it through the toughest parts of the trail without a problem. I then came across a section of the trail that was barely wide enough for the R1T to fit in. However, the vehicle's hydraulic cross-slick suspension handled it with a plumb. The trail opened up a bit as we continued our ascent up to the nearly 13,000 foot peak that we reached, but it wasn't too long before the road got a lot more rocky and a lot steeper. However, the R1T's quad motor setup with torque vectoring and over 800 horsepower made even the most challenging climbs seem like child's play. Thank you. 
The R1T's aggressive regenerative braking system made going down the other side of the mountain simple. Set in max mode, the regenerative braking system worked so well and was so strong, I rarely ever had to actually touch the friction brakes. The R1T handled every challenge that we threw at it, and there were quite a few very challenging moments, but the truck handled it with ease. The powerful electric powertrain allowed us to crawl along at a slow, steady pace the whole time. And there probably are very few completely stock all-wheel drive vehicles that could have handled the course that we took on with the ease that the R1T did. Of course, the day wouldn't be complete if we didn't drive through a few streams. Now, we didn't do any real deep water traversing, but we did have some fun in the water, as you can see here. For both days of this media drive, all of our meals were prepared using the R1T's Camp Kitchen, which is a $5,000 option that slides in and out of the R1T's gear tunnel. The camp kitchen includes two cooking elements, a four gallon sink, and a 30 piece kitchen set from Snow Peak that includes spatulas, tongs, a can opener, a water kettle, titanium cutlery, and more. The 1440 watt induction stovetop draws power from the high voltage battery pack. Rivian told us that you only lose about a mile of range for every hour that you use this equipment. But if you do the math, I think you'll lose a little more than three miles of range when driving on pavement. However, if you're off-roading, your efficiency isn't nearly as good and you probably will lose only about a mile to a mile and a half for every hour you use the camp kitchen stovetop. We also got a chance to check out the R1T's three-person tent option. That can be yours for an additional $2,650. It has a 56 by 96 inch footprint and is 48 inches tall. It comes with a set of Rivian cargo crossbars that support the unit across the top of the cargo bed. And yes, I climbed up in there to check it out myself and it was pretty cool. It might be a little tight for three people, but for two, it definitely has plenty of room. Another really cool feature of the R1T is its onboard air compressor. The air compressor's accessory kit is stored in a compartment in the left side gear tub. All you need to do is take the hose out and then attach it to the compressor inside of the bed. You then set it for the proper PSI that you want. Now, in the case of our drive, the Rivians that we had had the optional 20-inch off-road wheels. Their normal recommended PSI is 48 pounds per square inch on pavement. However, for our off-roading adventure, we lowered that down to 28 pounds per square inch. So when we were done with our drive, we needed to get the tires back up before we got on pavement. So we used this air compressor set the system to 48 pounds per square inch, and it only took about five minutes to get each wheel up to 48 pounds per square inch. In under 20 minutes, we were good to go. After a long day of off-roading, Rivian cleaned up the trucks, and it was our time to take them out on the highway. I had the opportunity to drive the vehicle 105 miles on a combination of mostly highway, but also some back winding mountainous roads. I was able to do a few acceleration runs and the R1T did not disappoint. Now I'm not sure 
it was able to get to 60 and three seconds claimed by Rivian, but we did have the 21 inch all terrain tires on, and that claim is made with the 21 inch road tires. But still, the vehicle was incredibly powerful and fast, and even at highway speeds, when you punch that accelerator, the vehicle just takes off and leaves everything else behind you. Overall, the R1T's road manners was actually excellent. It's surprising to see a vehicle that can perform so well off-road drive like a car when it's on pavement. The steering was tight. The cornering was crisp. I have to take my hats off to the Rivian engineers because they really nailed it with this. This vehicle is just as comfortable climbing rocks as it is buzzing along the highway or taking sharp turns. Doesn't feel like a truck, very little body roll. And another thing that I noticed that I was shocked was how, was how quiet the cabin was. Now this has the 20 inch all terrain tires, which are the most aggressive tires that Rivian offers. So you'd expect to get a lot of tire noise, but I tell you, the interior, even at high highway speeds, was nice and quiet. I'd go as far as to saying that at 80, 85 miles an hour, the R1T was actually quieter than what my Tesla Model 3 is. And that's quite an accomplishment for a big boxy truck with off-road tires. One of the things I need to point out was, as this was a pre-production prototype, not all of the features on the R1T we drove worked. One of those that didn't that was disappointing was the trip meter. It simply wasn't enabled, so I couldn't do a proper consumption test. However, the energy screens that were enabled and the instant consumption screen that you get on the driver's display and allowed me to figure out approximately how efficient the R1T is while driving on the highway. I started off my 105 mile mostly highway drive with 62% state of charge and 144 miles of estimated range and finished up with 32% state of charge and 61 miles of estimated driving range. So that means we use 30% of the battery to drive 105 miles. If you do the math, that would give the R1T a driving range of about 350 miles. And we know that that's not the case. So what gives? Well, the big problem is my starting point was about 4,000 feet higher elevation than the ending point. So it's very difficult to put a lot of weight into what my consumption was. I will say, however, that I drove the vehicle extremely hard in those 105 miles, doing a lot of standstill acceleration runs, some high-speed highway driving. I even tested out the top speed at one point. So I did use a lot more energy than what someone normally would over that course. However, the drop in elevation certainly helped the R1T put up better consumption numbers than it would on flat terrain. And while I noted that the pre-production software on the R1T I drove didn't have a trip meter to reset so I could see my actual consumption for that drive, the driver's display does have an instant consumption meter that shows you your consumption for the last 5 minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes. So when I finished the 105 mile drive, I looked at the last 30 minutes of my driving, which was on basically flat terrain. And my consumption rating was 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. And that makes sense, because if you do the math, a 130 kilowatt hour battery pack would equate to 314 miles of range. The R1T has a 135 kilowatt hour battery pack, but that's the gross capacity. Rivian hasn't announced the net capacity. So let's say they hold five kilowatt hour in the reserve, then a 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour average works out to 130 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that would explain the R1T's 314 mile EPA rated range. Next up, let's do a walk around of the vehicle. We'll start at the front and take a look at Rivian's trademark stadium style headlights. I'm not a huge fan of the appearance, but I don't hate them. And I do like how they look at night. With a push of a button, the R1T's tailgate automatically lowers. And it has this additional flap to cover the hinge area so you don't get rocks and debris stuck in there. I think that's a great feature. It happens to me all the time with my Toyota Tacoma. The button to open and close the tonneau cover is next to the tailgate button. However, on this pre-production model, it didn't work. 
There are two nice long LED lights in the back of the bed to light up the cargo area at night. The optional full-size spare that cost $600 is located conveniently under the bed liner. And there are two 120 volt outlets on the right side wall of the cargo area. When the vehicle is unlocked, you can use this button to unlock the 11 cubic foot gear tunnel. You still have to pull the door open, but you could also open it from inside the vehicle on the center infotainment system screen. Now we should note that this will be mostly filled if you get the camp kitchen option, but without it, there's a ton of room in there. The gear tunnel door was designed so owners could stand on it to access things on the roof and they'll even support an overweight journalist. The charge port is on the front left fender and can be opened from inside the vehicle or by pressing a button just above the wheel well. The J1772 inlet is exposed, but to DC fast charge, I have to flip this little cover down. Another press of the button closes the charge port door. But it's not a problem if you forget to close the charge port door. As soon as you turn the vehicle on, it will close automatically. The interior of the R1T was very comfortable. It has vegan leather and reclaimed wood for the dashboard. There's a floor mounted center storage compartment and retractable cup holders that slide into the center console. And the R1T has a big panoramic sunroof that lets a lot of light in the cabin. The locking center console is accessed by pressing one of the two buttons on the front of it. And inside you'll find two USB-C ports. There isn't a lot of interior storage compartments in the R1T, but the door panel storage compartments do have this expandable flap. Curiously, there is no glove compartment in the R1T. Inside the driver's side door, you'll find a flashlight that'll always be ready when you need it because it's constantly being charged by the R1T's battery pack. Interestingly, it uses a single 2170 battery cell, the same cells that Rivian uses for its high voltage battery pack. And the battery pack consists of 7,776 battery cells. If you add the one battery cell that's used in the flashlight, the Rivian R1T needs 7,777 battery cells. The rear seating area has a center touchscreen display for heating and cooling. It also has two USB-C ports there. And there's an additional USB-C port in the headrest of each seat. The R1T has a 20 inch touchscreen center display that allows you to control many of the features of the vehicle. So let's first take a look at access and security. From here, you can remotely open or close the frunk or the charge port. You can also open the left or right side of the gear tunnel, but note it only opens that door. You need to manually close the gear tunnel doors. You can also open and close the tenure cover, lower the tailgate, adjust the steering wheel mirrors, and lock or unlock the passenger windows. Next, we'll take a look at the drivetrain settings. This is where you adjust the regenerative braking force. There's currently a setting for max, high, and medium, but Rivian tells me they're gonna change the names to max, high, and low. This is also where you adjust the ride from stiff to soft, and also the ride height. Now the ride height is dependent on the driving mode you're in. You notice I can't set the ride height to max because I'm an all-purpose driving mode. In order to do that, I need to be in the off-road driving mode. Now each different driving mode has its own default settings for ride height, ride stiffness, brake regeneration, but it does allow the driver to make some adjustments if they prefer to do so. In addition to all purpose and sport driving mode, there's a conserved driving mode. That's the most efficient driving mode that Rivian has on the R1T. It sets the vehicle up to have the maximum range. And then there's off-road, the fun mode. You'll notice that it sets the ride height to high, not max. That's because max ride height is really meant to get over a specific obstacle. From here, you can enter rock crawl mode, which we used a lot in our off-roading. You could also enter rally and drift modes. Next, we'll take a quick look at the navigation system. One cool feature that it has is it allows the user to search for charging stations. And you can do so by charging speed, by network, or by availability. Now, not all networks have their availability accessible, but the ones that do will be shown here in the navigation system. The R1T has heated 
and cooled front seats, which you control here, and also a heated steering wheel. Much like Tesla and also the Porsche Taycan, you control the flow of the air vents by dragging these icons around. You also tap them to turn them on or off. The same goes for the rear seating vents. However, the rear passengers also have that center display screen where they can control their own heating and cooling if they choose to. The energy screen is where you'll find your state of charge and estimated remaining range. It's also where you turn on or turn off the 120 volt outlets in the vehicle. You can also set your charge limit there. Now, like many manufacturers, Rivian doesn't recommend charging to 100%. They actually only recommend charging to 70% on a daily basis. Then you can set it to 85% for extended range or 100% if you're going on a long trip. You also set your scheduled charging from this screen, and you can open and close the charge port flap. But as I mentioned earlier, if you forget to close it, as soon as you turn the vehicle on, it'll close automatically before you drive off. You can also reduce the amperage that the vehicle takes in from here if you're charging from a circuit that can't safely deliver the full 48 amps that the R1T can accept. If you tap the truck icon from this page, you'll get some basic information on your R1T, like the mileage and your VIN and some other info. Tapping the light bulb icon, you'll see where you can adjust the cabin lights, the display, as well as the interior accent lighting. So that's it for our first drive review of the Rivian R1T. As you can tell from the video, we were impressed. It did everything it was called upon to do. It handled a 28 mile aggressive off-road track through the mountains of Colorado. We drove it on pavement. Its manners were great. Handling was great. Acceleration is fantastic. The cabin is quiet and comfortable. And uh, we think Rivian has a winner here. I'm pretty certain that uh, everybody that's waiting for an R1T is gonna be very happy when that vehicle arrives in their driveway. That's it for today. Please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.